Jordan with Education. Uh, I just wanted to film a quick video on the process for um, spontaneous awakening and spontaneous breathing trials. So we're gonna start with our spontaneous awakening trial. I've got our policies pulled up here. You can find these in Policy Medical just by typing in the search box, spontaneous awakening or spontaneous breathing. Make sure it is the Tyler policy, not Sulphur Springs. So the way we start our SATs, um, per our policy, this has to be done before shift change at night. Um, so it says specifically assess every patient every morning before shift change. So that is a night shift responsibility. There is no specific time. It just has to be done before shift change. You will screen your patient um, with the SAT safety screen that is listed in EPIC for you. But some of those examples are oxygen saturation of less than 88%, FiO2 of greater than 50% with a PEEP of greater than eight, not spontaneously breathing, agitation, greater than one vasopressor in use, or with escalating doses, um, increased ICPs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, if the patient is paralyzed, they fail as well. So keep, be sure you're looking at those exclusion criteria. If none of those criteria are present, then we're going to pass our safety screen and we're actually going to proceed with the SAT trial. What this means is you are going to hold all sedation. Guys, that includes Presidex. Presidex is considered a sedative and it must be held per our policy. If for some reason the patient becomes too anxious without the Presidex, you may get an order from your provider to continue the Presidex at a low dose, but that's provider specific. So you have to reach out and ask them for an order. If you're following our policy, our policy states hold all sedation and analgesics. If an analgesic is in place for pain, you can continue that per our policy for active acute pain. The spontaneous awakening trial is considered passed if they are able to open their eyes to verbal stimuli or they tolerate the sed sedation interruption for up to four hours without exhibiting any of the failure criteria. The failure criteria is listed as sustained, sustained anxiety, agitation, or pain. That doesn't mean they get anxious for five minutes and then they're fine. It needs to be sustained. Respiratory rate of greater than 35 breaths per minute for five minutes or longer. An oxygen saturation of less than 88% for five minutes or longer. Any acute cardiac dysrhythmias. Again, that's acute. That doesn't mean they've been in AFib and they remain in AFib and then any sign of respiratory distress. If they have any of that failure criteria, you are to restart all of the sedatives at half the rate that they were previously running at, and then titrate up for patient comfort based on our titration policy. If they don't exhibit any of that failure criteria, you will move on to the SBT. So let's talk about our SBT. Our spontaneous breathing trials we're going to start once they pass the SAT. You will let your RT know that they have passed the SAT. You will also document that in EPIC. Please make sure you're documenting, otherwise it just looks like it wasn't done. Um, the same exclusion criteria are met or not met that, are, that were there for SATs. You will use the same, to, the same exclusion criteria. So I'm not gonna read them again to you. However, if they meet any of those exclusion criteria, then we're not gonna move forward with either one. If they don't meet any of those, which if they pass the SATs, they should not meet any exclusion criteria for the SBTs, then we will pass and we will move forward with our SBT. This is all an RT duty. Uh, you will not touch the vent and switch their mode. You will not titrate their FiO2. Um, you will not do any of the breathing trial process. However, if after 30 minutes they are tolerating everything just fine, your RT will walk in and assess the patient and they will pull mechanics and check for a cuff leak. If their cuff leak is indicated, they will call the provider and we will move on from there. We will either extubate or not, depending on provider preference. If they pass and they don't exhibit any of the following failure criteria, that's when um, everything is reported to the provider, your RT will report mechanics. If they fail, then we will return the patient to the, the previous ventilator settings and notify the current provider. All of that's after 30 minutes. 
if they don't exhibit any of the failure criteria during a 120 minute trial, uh, then they've passed and we'll place the patient back on ventilator settings and notify the current provider again. All right, so we've got two different options. We can go off of 30 minutes to see if they've passed or failed and check for a cuff leak. Um, if none of that's present, then we can go to 120 minutes. Typically, it, I've seen 30 minutes, uh, and then we make a decision based on that. Um, if, if the patient fails the SB, SBTs and we put the patient back on the vent, that doesn't mean you have to restart sedation. They've passed their SATs. They've maintained a RAS of zero to negative two off of sedation. Um, so we're gonna keep it off of them. And at any point that we go back on mechanical ventilation and they start exhibiting any signs of increased agitation or anxiety and their RAS score changes, we can restart our sedation at half the previous rate and then titrate up for comfort from there. Any questions, let me know in the comments. Reach out to me and we'll talk soon.